is a very strong part of my belief system. I've been following you from the day you got onto Twitter. And I've been following and I And I take your advice yes. occasionally. Thank you so, so much. If I ever make any missteps, I'll blame you as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take that up. And uh, as you know, when I mailed you a study, I got a friend of mine to do on, on your behavior on Twitter. You know, it threw up fantastically interesting things. And one of the things that people ask me, as they've been asking me for years, why do people like Anand Mahindra spend so much time on Twitter? Because to somebody who doesn't get and say ROI on Twitter, it seems to be frivolous almost to spend so much time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you could just tell me, help my viewers understand, why does this group C, group chairman, spend so much time on something like social media? Why do you do it? There's a very interesting uh, tweet actually that came out of somebody who I think is, an, uh, is a commentator on business and he said, any CEO who says he doesn't, he or she doesn't have time for Twitter is essentially saying they don't have time for customers, for R&D and for talent. Customers, R&D and talent. And I'm okay. going to add some more right, sure. to that list. And that is anyone who says that they don't have time for Twitter means apart from the three I just mentioned right now, also don't have time for culture, for information gathering, for brand building, and for advertising. I could spend a day telling you about how this tool is now indispensable to me. I started out and we once talked some Correct. years ago. Yeah. I got into it by, by a yeah. young Britisher who was working with us, an expat intern with us, and came in and said, Anand, you know, you, you have to get on Twitter. And I said, what the hell is that? And he explained it to me and he said, you know, there's already a huge following waiting for you to come in because somebody put up a, your handle. It's a 250 people have signed yes. up for you. And that was in 2009. And I, I experimented it, I flirted with it. And, and then I mistakes. began to understand it was a powerful cockpit tool for a CEO for free. Right. If I went to Microsoft or somebody else, it probably asked me a million dollars, much more, much more to right. set up a system like this. And it's free. It's an octopus. The tentacles that reach out, or let me use another metaphor. It's a neural network right. that's created. It's a network which is available for you for transmission as well as for receipt of information. And if I take each of the buckets that I talked to you about, I could come up with incredible stories about how they have helped me particularly as a CEO of a multi-business organization that is global. If I had to get information from across the corners of the globe, you can't do it today Absolutely. without Twitter. You can't even design a system. Since we talked last time, let me tell you a fascinating story. I don't think I related this anecdote. You know, we acquired Sanyong Motors in Korea. At one point, three people who were from a union from the past Sanyong, before we acquired it, who were still agitating for certain reinstatement rights, crawled into the plant and went up a chimney in the factory and just did a dharna, as we'd call it. Right. It became a cause celebre in Sangyo. It became known as the chimney protest, and there were t-shirts. And these guys were there for a month or two in the dead of winter, right on top. When I went into the plant, I had to go there for a launch of a product. I walked in and I started getting tweets from one of the people up there. Right. Wow. Telling me, I can see you walking into the plant, welcome Mr. Mahendra, and starting to a dialogue with me. Now in Korea, usually CEOs are not that interactive with but people. This in was, he was tweeting in English or in... Get this, he actually then started tweeting in Hindi. Right. So he wow. had somebody down with below him. who translated, My goodness. forget Korean, he started in English mm. and then he started translating, right. he started giving me tweets in Hindi. The interesting thing is, I'll just, the day they decided to come down from the chimney, look at the time zone issue. I was the first person who got the tweet that they're coming down. I called the CEO in Korea and told him they're coming down. Right. I hope you're around there. Think of the power of information. I was the first to get the information. I can give you myriad stories like that. Building culture. Again, this is a story I may not have told you earlier, but I got a tweet one day from somebody thanking me these young kids who had gone to a concert in Nasik had too much to drink. One of the girls was violently sick just outside the gates of our Nasik plant. And they just tweeted me telling me, you know, we want to thank you because one of your watchmen mm. came out and gave us water and looked after us until we found a taxi back. Fantastic. What I did was I actually called up the plant office and I said, find out who that watchman is. 
and just tell him that I appreciate what he did because that's the culture we must have at Mahindra. You can imagine that for some watchman in the plant in Nasik saying, how the hell did the chairman of the company get to know about this small thing I did? But I can... The but last I, time he spoke, there was a fire that somebody told you about, which was in the Nasik plant, I think. Yeah, well, it, 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 somebody tweeted it, it, to you. Yeah, somebody tweeted to me, there's a fire. That's happened three or four times. Right. I told them... Why, why, do you have so many fires? Yeah. why do you have so many fires? Why do you have so many fires? Well, metaphorically, right. we have many fires right. going on. But the power of information is simply staggering. So the question, though, is that you can't get that benefit unless you have a sizable number of followers. Then you get the network effect. Sure. And why do you get those followers? If I was only to be a billboard of advertising for the company or telling them great things and blowing our own trumpet about our company, I don't think I'd get a followership. So the trade-off is that you have to share of yourself. People are interested in you as a person. So your tweets cannot be only about the company. Sure, they have sure. to be about... Which is why your tweets about music, about culture, about... I try uh, and reach your out. What's that, Wonderbox? Uh, we talk yeah. a lot about authenticity and right. honesty in Java. I think people look for that in Twitter as well. Right. So in that sense, there is a trade-off that you have to share of yourself. If you do, you will then probably have a shot at getting a sizable number of followers. And you have to tweet interesting things where they'll say, hey, I didn't know that. And if I follow Anand Mahendra, I'll get to know that. Absolutely. That's the work that, that is involved. Have you ever tried to sense. measure uh, your sort of ROI on Twitter? Let have me you ask you, to? this is the conversation part. You're, yeah. the, you're the guru on yeah. that. You send me an analysis. What do you think it might be? No, I, I think what it would be upwards of 100 crores. <laughs> I, no, I, honestly. No, if you break up each kind of, uh, forget about the WhatsApp wonder box kind of tweets, but even say you're testing of a commercial, when you put up a commercial and you say, what do you think? Yeah. And you get responses. Absolutely. Uh, you go to a research company and yeah. ask them to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. going to cost you 30, 40, 50 lakhs for them to Absolutely. test it. And then, of course, the quality of uh, the cost of time for them to test it and come back. And this is not being tested by a controlled and in a controlled environment Absolutely. by a focus group. Absolutely. You know, the respondents are actual consumers. So I think, I think, it, I mean, it's tough. I mean, nobody has tried it. Uh, I, I did your analysis based on what I saw somebody had done with Elon Musk. Really? And I said, you know, but again, they couldn't put a dollar value. They said $50 million, I think. And um, I, I think oh, oh, upwards of 100 crores. I think the group should be paying you back for every Let me put it to you this way. You're probably right that mm. you could do that. And I right. think there would be very clear ways of measuring quantitatively. I don't even pay attention to that because I'll tell you why. Without Twitter, I don't think I could operate in my style of management which is for me to be a chairman who is removed, who allows autonomy and empowerment, but a chairman who every person in the company, 200,000 more people, know that I am going to be aware. I'm not in an ivory tower anymore. Sure. So my empowerment can be afforded because at the same time, I have an information system at my disposal, which allows me... Which nobody can control. I give you one simple example <clears throat> in our retail operation. Somebody from Assam tweeted me that in one of our mum and me shops, at that time the brand was mum and me, right. there was a MRP was being violated. And they sent me a mobile picture of this product in there where the MRP had been scratched out. So I somebody, know. the franchisee was obviously playing, doing something wrong. Can you imagine the guy in Assam, the franchisee saying, Anand Mahendra sitting in Bombay knows when I'm fiddling with the MRP. Sure. Tell me the power of that. Would I be able to operate like that without it? So I don't worry about <coughs> ROI. Right. No, you do, just, but you don't worry about calculating. No, because it's, it's infinite. Yeah, sure. I would not be able to, to operate in the way I...